you know, I don't really the know sun, what's the sun together. bouncing off the off the Delaware. Rainbow effect. Rainbow, yeah, that's, that's nice. Pretty yeah. Very cool, yeah. very cool. Kind of amazing. All right, so a recent edition of Jersey Man Magazine included our own Amy Fadul, Marshall Harris, and Jen Daniels on the front cover, and inside an article in which they all talk about all things sports, that's for sure. Sarah also, <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second, has been in uh, Philly Man and Jersey Man. All right, so and now we welcome and we're joined by Ken Dunnick, who played tight end for the 1980 Eagles, the NFC champions as well, and we're going to have some ring proof in a second here, <laughs> as well as the Philadelphia Stars of the USFL. He is the publisher of Jersey Man and Philly Man magazines, and believe it or not, 35 years, 35 years since the Eagles went to that Super Bowl in New Orleans, you're or even a little bit more. You're killing me, right? Well, you were, you were <laughs> eight at the time. I was just a, a pup. Eight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, by the way, you guys get up early for this game. Oh, yes, goodness. we do. Other than Vermeil's training camp, I've never been up this early <laughs> for work. So. you got to look back, and, and Vermeil's training camps were notorious for how hard they were, right? I mean, he, he would do three-a-days. I mean, it was Listen. just craziness, right? I was just talking to Brendan Graham, and training camp back then, we went, uh, we started July 14th, we went 19 days in a row without a day off, two a days, full pads every day, Oklahoma drill every morning, okay, wow. and there was no union, strong union back then, there were no rules governing how much you could hit, and of course, Vermeil was known for his work ethic, and he put us through the paces, but he made that team a Super Bowl team. Well, you know, I tell people all the time, you know, it was way different than what they have right now. You know, you can't even have two a days, real two a days right. now. If you do have a two a days, it's a pad of practice in the morning, and they may have a special teams walkthrough mm -hmm. in the evening. When I first got in the league and I, I got drafted in '95, we had six weeks of two a days, pads every practice. Right. And I had crazy people with Bill Romanowski, you know, Kirk Cavea, <laughs> you know. I remember Kirk Cavea was back in the uh, locker room on game day at halftime. Smoking a cigarette. I'm like, this is what the NFL is. So, so what do you think different. then? What do you think then when you when you see how things are done at training camp now in in this version of the NFL? I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was born club, 25 huh? years later. Yeah, I couldn't right. enjoy. It. And the money is a lot different oh, too. Sure. Believe it or not, the NFL minimum salary when I broke in in 1980 was 25,000. Wow. That's crazy. And the highest paid player in the league in 1980 was Bill Berge at 330,000. So what? that's less than the minimum salary of a rookie these days. Wow. So, but I'm, I'm happy for the players. It's a great game, and uh, they deserve it because it's a dangerous sport. Mm. Yeah, well, I, I talked to a guy, guy uh, I think it was either Guy. Guy McIntyre? Or, yeah, Guy McIntyre. Or, uh, he was a first rounder, and um, he signed for $80,000. Yeah. His sign of bonus was $80,000, and his pick, base. Yeah was like $80,000. Right. I'm like, are you kidding yeah. me? And he was doing all right. Back yeah, and I, and I was in 1995. When, I'm, when I got drafted in 1995, right. my sign-up bonus was like 400 grand. Then 10 years later, the second rounder came in, his sign-up bonus was $3 million. I know. How about that jump? <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, you know, the, I played in the USFL. We're going to talk about that, mm -hmm. I hope, a little bit. But uh, the USFL had a lot to do with the escalating NFL salaries because immediately when that league was formed, it jumped from twenty five to 65000 which well, was a pretty big, help. Yeah, yeah. big leap. Yeah. yeah. And keep in mind that guys like Steve Young and Jim Kelly and Herschel Walker, Reggie White, all got their start in the USFL. So yeah, it was William a very Fuller. competitive yep. league. Yeah, yeah a lot yeah, of played with William Fuller. And, and your, your stars that. teams were, were phenomenal. Which were the weird. stars were loaded. I mean, yeah. you know, you talk about Bart Oates, who won multiple Super Bowls uh, with the Giants. Sean Landetta, maybe the best punter that Irv ever Eatman. played in the league. Mm -hmm. Irv Eatman. Kelvin Sam, Bryant. Sam Mills was the hardest hitting player I ever saw. Yep. And Oops. at 5'9", 225 pounds, you know, he, he was unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, he hit uh, right here. Yeah. You Hard remember. Well, that's you because he was, he was low and he, he yeah. got underneath you. I tried to block him in practice. I couldn't do it. I no. was about a foot uh -uh. taller. Well, plus, he's a muscle, too. He's just oh, he was muscle. one yeah. big muscle. Yeah. yeah. So you have a documentary coming out we regarding do. the uh, yeah. USFL. We're working on it called uh, The Team That Time Forgot. Okay. And, uh, the greatest team that really no one will remember um, because of the politics of football and the strength of the NFL. But, uh, you know, it's been uh, over 30 years since the Stars won the, the last football championship in Philadelphia, by the way, mm -hmm. owned by Miles Tannenbaum, who was a great owner. Carl Peterson, who had some success with uh, Dick Vermeil, was the president and GM and brought in a lot of great players like Chuck Fusina and uh, unheralded quarterback, the smartest guy I've ever seen on the football field. And, you know, Kelvin Bryant, and you see some of the, uh, the video running here, but we're very proud of the stars, and uh, my goal is to, to make people aware that this was a great football Yeah, of course, you have, the, you, you have the first two rings you have lined up there from the Philadelphia Stars. The last one is the Eagles' NFC Championship ring on the end. Yeah, I played four years and made it to the 
championship game all four seasons in my career. Wow. So yeah. I hold the record for being the worst player with the most jewelry in pro football <laughs> your, your story is interesting in that you were a, a basketball player. I was. I did not play high At school Memphis. football. I went to Memphis State on a basketball scholarship. Right in between the good teams, right in between that Larry Keenan, Larry Finch team and the Keith Lee Keith team. Lee. Yep. But, uh, yeah, and then uh, the football coaches talked me into uh, trying out, and I knew I wasn't going to play in the NBA. I thought it was worth a shot. Came to the Eagles. Played behind Cruffley and Spagnola. They both got hurt in 1980 preseason. I started two preseason games. Got hurt, but they saw enough to keep me. Was activated midway through the year. Got hurt again, but made it to the Super Bowl, which was a dream come true. And tell us a little bit about Jersey Man Magazine and Philly Man Magazine and the, and the transition from the playing days into what you're doing now. Yeah, you know, I had some contacts. Uh, I was in the wholesale paper business for 30 years. I had uh, people that I knew in the printing business. I had written a book in 2008 called An Improbable Journey. So, um... We just decided to take a shot because we didn't see anything specifically targeting men and men's interests. And so six years ago, Jersey Man was, was born. You see some of the, the covers there, including Jason Peters. We've got Fletcher Cox on the cover coming up here. Ah. Now there, then, there's our, there's our. There's your crew. And yep. then there's the new cover that's coming out uh, next week with Fletcher. So we're very proud. And Philly Man, we launched two years ago. And we, uh, got a big gala coming up on November 2nd. At yeah, Ballroom give us a little information bed. about yeah. that. What, what, what's happening there? We honor uh, the 10 men and women of the year uh, candidates uh, at a big gala. Uh, last year was our first one. We sold it out. We had to move it to oh, a bigger wonderful. venue. Good, good so place, Ballroom yeah. at the Venn. Ballroom at the Venn. We're, we're expecting between 600 and 1,000 people to show up. A lot of celebrities, and it's just a great night honoring 10 deserving men and women in our area. And it's a, it's a masquerade theme, so we have a lot of fun. So if anybody would like uh, any information on how to attend this event, you can contact me, Ken, at jerseymanmagazine.com, and we'll get you the Awesome. And of course, you had Sarah, a little feature on Sarah, not all that long Absolutely. Ago. Sarah was a fascinating story. Thank sure, you. Yeah. She is fascinating. She is fascinating. <laughs> Listen, are so nice. I respect yes. anybody who gets up this early to do a job, so <laughs> you guys should all be in the magazine. Ken, we appreciate it, man. Always great, great seeing you. Great to be here. Congratulations. So Continue success. Yes, thanks. All right, it is 652. Eagles long snapper John Dornbos gets ready to unveil his latest magic trick. We're going to look ahead to tonight's 